the secretary of the carnival committee, Lynn Green, talks about the day's event. Some can never be guaranteed with a summer in this country, and so it was on June the 12th. However, no one was going to let the rain spoil the fun. The carnival parade assembled in station approach before setting off for the town centre. Dressing up has an enduring appeal, whatever one's age, and this year attracted many participants. <laughs> Braintree offers best service and has done since 11.99. Anticipation grew in the high street as the crowd waited for the procession. <laughs> After a lull, down came the rain again. <laughs> Kelly, Gemma and Kaylee, the Braintree Carnival Queen and her princesses, led the parade as the rain eased off. They were followed by the Scout and Guide Band and then the Whitton Majorettes. <laughs> Benson's School of Motoring sponsored Braintree's Carnival Queen of 11.99. Local majorettes and a miniature lovebug car continued to entertain the crowd lining the streets. Official Queen and her princesses were fortunate enough to have an extra large umbrella. The princesses from Clacton smile for the camera, as does their queen. They also have that essential accessory. As well as other carnival queens from the area, the Braintree and Witten Times float reminds us that it has been recording local events since 1929. Many floats pass by the spectators, showing the community of Braintree making an effort and raising funds for charity. <laughs> the 
parade left the high street for Meadowside Field, where the fun fair and free entertainment lasted late into the night, continuing the tradition of carnivals since 1964. Andrea Bennett of the Charter Working Group describes the day. A quartet of violin, drum, bagpipe and a hurdy-gurdy provided appropriate music for the medieval fair held on the Tabor Triangle site. Unlike the carnival the previous day, the event was blessed with ideal weather for the demonstrations. Traditional crafts on display included tablet weaving. Tablet weaving. I'll go this way. Yeah. Early Egypt reached its peak in the 15th century. And it's done by threading up wooden or tablets made of wood, leather, or fish, whichever you had uh, to hand. The tablets are threaded up and then they're turned. And it's the way you thread them and the turning of them that creates the pattern. So, Tablets turned. Bow and arrow production was a widespread craft in medieval times. As well as displays, crowd participation was encouraged on the day. These majestic birds of prey were used for hunting in medieval times. What we're going to do this afternoon yeah. is fly Maggie and our other two friends, Ace and Hope, on the arena. And we'll be getting people out on the arena just to be involved with the birds and get a little bit closer to them. And uh, Maggie loves to play, so we're all going to have some fun. The falconry display was very popular and attracted many spectators. Okay, this is Tasmin. Tasmin is four years old. She was born at the falconry centre at Hagley, where we come from. She's a female lama falcon, and that's a bird which comes from around the Mediterranean and around Northern Africa as well. Again, she's a falcon, so she'll be flying at quite high speed, and she loves to fly right through the crowd. Are you ready? Yeah. Ice! Right. Right. Are you ready? Yep. Be still. Be very still. One of the final events of the day was the Medieval Combat Society, who put on a spectacular show. Originally formed in 1971, the Medieval Combat Society are one of the oldest of its kind performing in Britain today. With its members coming together from all walks of life, it is not uncommon for entire families to become actively involved. <coughs> the costumes, weapons and armour featured throughout the display are replicas, handmade by members of the society using both modern and ancient methods. The show you will see is based upon the medieval tournaments of the 14th century, during the reign of King Edward III. The society continued in combat, cheered on by the crowd that had gathered to watch the spectacle. Oh, 
The overseas visitors to Charter Day were welcomed to the Town Hall Centre by Fred Card, the Council Chairman. First of all, of all, of course, we have uh, friends from France, from Paris, to uh, are the twinning town with Rentree, uh, uh, as you probably know. The second uh, lot of guests, if I can put it that way, that I have to mention, of course, are our friends from the United States. I saw a film uh, that was uh, taken uh, 50 years ago at the 750th anniversary of the signing of the Charter. And indeed, it was a film, we, we were told, that was made by the father of one of our foremost citizens, who's here today, Ben Joslin, in 1949. <laughs> now, I have to tell you uh, that this film, ladies and gentlemen, shows a very active ribbon dance that took place outside the town hall. And I believe that one of the participants of the dance troupe was a one Gordon Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I do know that Gordon Cornell, who he is with us here today, but uh, I also like to know, uh, would like you to know that he's given trem tremendous help uh, it, 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 with the Charter Group uh, for the 800, 800-year celebrations. Yori Williams played the part of the Bishop of London for the recreation of the granting of the Market Charter. King John arrived on horseback, followed by large numbers of school children dressed in tarbards made at the museum with the help of local children. The decorative banners on display were made by local school children under the guidance of a local artist, Margaret Mills. What's built there, beginning in 1199. <laughs> A wonderful display of colourful costumes made up the crowd who attended this important day. So we have very distinguished guests who are with us. on behalf of the trade people of Braintree for royal permission for a market charter to be granted today in perpetuity. As you will know, the market is necessary to provide for the many pilgrims who pass through Braintree at the crossroads. The market will provide lasting work for local people and is therefore most pleasing to the king. The king is delighted to hear that a new church is being built at the crossroads to provide spiritual support for the pilgrims as they make their way to St. Edmundsbury, Walsingham and Canterbury. The king is interested in the welfare of all his people, especially those with poor means. It is therefore with particular pleasure that the king will now distribute special gifts to the young people from the following schools in commemoration of today's most illustrious and happy event. The representatives from the Alex Hunter High School.
Two children from each of the 19 schools represented in this royal audience were presented with gifts from the king prior to the actual granting of the market charter. Royal Majesty King John, having heard the clock strike 11, will now present the market charter to the Bishop of London. I call for three cheers for the king. Hip hip! Hey! Hip hip! Hey! Hip hip! The market charter had been granted, and it was time for King John to depart, followed by his court and his musicians. While the crowd departs, our guests from Braintree, Massachusetts, discuss the day's events with our MP, Alan Hurst, while local school children show off the gifts they received from King John. What's inside? Coins. Coins. Can you show me? Open it up. Is this on TV? You, you wait and see. What's inside? Show me. Oh, hang on. It's not the wrong way. Show me, that's it. Oh, very good. On the same day as the granting of the market charter, a medieval market was held within the grounds of St. Michael's Church. As well as musicians, there were other forms of entertainment, displays, and stalls that included local produce. Many people attended the event, including from the past King John and the resurrected King Richard, Modern representatives included James Townrow, David Botel, and Jean Grice from Braintree Museum, who helped organize many of these charter events. Canon Bernard Davis of St. Michael's Church also joined in with the day's activities. Local produce on sale on the day included apples, strawberries, honey, and sheep's milk from Boydell's Dairy Farm. Alan Hurst and others sampled some locally grown asparagus. The jester returns to the town centre, and so does Malcolm Bryan, who was the narrator.
call the Charter Day ceremony. <laughs> How much is a euro grape worth? Two and a half. Two and a half what? <laughs> Two and a half something. <laughs> My job to make the coins. Silver pennies, the good silver coins of England. A silver penny like this was a day's wage for a skilled craftsman. One coin would have bought you four gallon of beer or 15 chickens. The coins, show them one side, a head with a crown on it to denote the king. There's a name on the coin, it reads Henrik, that's in memory of John's father, Henry Plantagenet. Yeah, what's through hell? The top two, this one and this one, are original coins of the time of King John and King Richard. Both of these were actually struck in Northampton. And they read R E N A R, Rainer on Nor. Rainer on North on Northampton. Rainer was the king was the moneyer, and he had to put his name on the coins by law, because if he was found to be making lightweight coins, the penalty was for the moneyer to be castrated. Didn't stop him working, but it made him think. The reverse design shows a short cross with four pellets in each angle. This cross was to facilitate the cutting of the coins into halves and into quarters to make half pennies and farthings. This was the only small change available in England in the time of King John. A penny like this was a day's wage and would have bought you four gallon of beer. So that one little tiny coin would have bought you one, far, uh, one gallon of beer. Also outside the museum, local radio enthusiasts attempted to make contact with our daughter town in Massachusetts. The chairman of the Amateur Radio Society explains. OK, it's uh, Melvin, Golf Zero Echo, Mike Kilo. I'm chairman of the Braintree District Amateur Radio Society. And we've set the station up here at the museum in the attempt to uh, make contact with Braintree in Massachusetts to help celebrate with the uh, connections of the pilgrims who went across from Braintree to America in the New World in the 16th century. Outside the old town hall, people joined in a ring dance. So the day ended on a note of revelry. Dr. George Carey greets children before enrobing for the civic service at St. Michael's. The civic procession enters the church. After the service, the Archbishop and clergy lead the congregation to a reception at the Town Hall. And it's lovely to be back in Braintree. I didn't know that I've actually preached in that church before. <laughs> <laughs> I was reminded by John Nobbs just a moment ago. I would have made use of that information. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, thank you very much. We look forward to our third coming, maybe one day. <laughs> Once again, wish you every blessing because it is a very fine place. 
I want to later meet some of the Americans who may be here and uh, to meet them and chat with them because I think that this kind of link is so important uh, for the life of such a community and indeed the French link as well. Now you've given us a very <coughs> lovely gift that we would treasure. This hardly is an exchange. <laughs> Public gardens were a gift to the town from Sidney Courtauld and his wife in 1888 and are much enjoyed by Braintree's people today. The gardens include the John Ray Knott Garden, which was opened by David Bellamy, and the war memorial to those who died in the two world wars. Many people gathered to hear Bocking Concert Brass, who play in the gardens three times a year. Thank you, Ken Few. <laughs> Christmas draws near, and throughout December, the street illuminations brightened the dark evenings in the town centre while the shops came alive with decorations and lights. The late night shopping events added to the excitement of the time, especially for the young. In the marketplace, there was much to interest young and old alike with modern as well as traditional entertainment. Later, above George Yard, a splendid display of fireworks lit up the sky. Oh. 